There we go. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? It's wonderful to see you today. We are going to be talking about heaven today. How many uh, plan on going there? Everyone raise their hand. Thank you very much. So we're going to be talking about that, what the Bible has to say about that. So I look forward to uh, sharing that with you. Now, I want to share something with you that has taken place over the past six months. Over the past six months, we've had this um, mission challenge where I've asked you to use your gifts and your talents and your graces. And um, many of you made things, cakes and pies and caught fish or helped and did this and used it as somewhat of a fundraiser. And it was to go to missions or send a kid to camp or the Sanctuary Restoration and Music Fund. So it was all, all good. And so we just finished it up at the beginning of October. And so I wanted to let you know that uh, from people kind of selling their different things or doing everything, we uh, raised over $10,000. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so uh, next week I'm going to share with you. I'm trying to type up what everyone did and, and how it worked out. And so I can pass that out um, to you. And so it's just a good thing. And I wanted to share that, that with you. And I'm going to invite our children's ministry, Megan Nairn, uh, to uh, share announcements with us. Those of you that are from home, we welcome you and thank you for being a part of the Laporte First United Methodist Church uh, service. Good morning. In your bulletin, you have a half sheet that has some announcements. I'll go over some of them, but you can find everything listed there. The first thing, clothesline. When I came in this morning, there were a variety of cards on the clothesline bulletin. If you wouldn't mind stopping and grabbing a card, um, the kids would greatly appreciate it. I know the weather's changing, and I think there were a couple of coats and whatnot. So if you're able to, if we can stop and get a card to help the kids, that would be fantastic. Also, the next treasure sale is next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, the 23rd. So be sure to stop by and find a treasure Next Sunday, the 24th, is Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat is happening from 1 to 3 here. We are still looking for individuals to volunteer, whether that's with decorating a trunk, helping with registration, um, taking photos, guiding people. We would greatly appreciate an extra hand or two to help with that. There is a clipboard um, on the front of the pew that you can stop and sign up or just reach out if you have any questions or want to sign up. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, we are still looking for donations of individually wrapped candy. Um, there's a bucket in the office you can place it in um, or you can reach out again to me and I can help you there. If you can have your donation in by Friday, that would be great. That way we can get everything organized. I can tell you last year we had over 100 bags of candy, and when I came in this morning, we were at 70, just about 70. So if you wouldn't mind throwing an extra bag, um, that would be awesome. Also, while we're on Trunk or Treat, let me talk to you about it. It is all happening outside. On the outskirts of the parking lot, that's where we'll set the trunks up. In the middle, that's where we'll have the games. Um, this year, we're doing something different in the aspect that food, we're not doing a full meal of a hot dog and chips and everything. Instead, it will be some snacks put together in a bag for them to pick up and take. It'll have applesauce, cheese stick, and I believe goldfish or some sort of cracker um, type thing for them to take and enjoy. And it will also have water that they can take. What if it rains? <laughs> Don't worry, we've got a backup plan. All the cars will pull in with their decorated trunks and they'll kind of pull in in a, a row and then the cars will drive down the middle so they can still dress up in their costumes, still have some fun, still drive and treat, I guess. Tr I mean, kind of, trunk or treat in that aspect. If we do have rain, we will not have games and we will not have the photo spot. But my hope is that it'll be nice and beautiful like today and we can all have fun outside and have everything there that we're planned. This week we have a variety of birthdays, so we'll start with those. Today, the 17th, we have Ray Irons, um, Amara Kopkowski, Lori Senso, and uh, Rebecca Schaefer. The 19th, we have Julie Hilbish and Lisa Young. On the 21st, we have Bob Cadwell and Jimma Jackson. 
And then the 22nd is Tim Welty. The 23rd is Morgan Llewellyn and Jane Stefani. And then the 24th is Jeanette Arnett. And we have one anniversary this week, and that is Jim and Tina Leonard on the 24th. So happy birthday and happy anniversary. A lot of good things happening. Our biblical focus comes from 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But it, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Let us bow our heads and hearts for our choral call to worship. Our liturgy is on the inside cover of your bulletin. Um, I'll read the leader part if you read the con congregation part. The Lord will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. Do not lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Our hymn of praise this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns. It's on page 327 in your hymn book, and the words are also on the screen. Let's watch it together. Let's sing it together. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave and rose victorious in the strife. Those he came to save his glories now we sing who died and rose on high who died eternal life to bring and lives that death may die crown him the lord of peace whose power a scepter sways from pole to pole that wars may cease, and all free prayer and praise, his right shall know no end, and round his pierced feet there flies a paradise extend, their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him with Lord of love, behold his hands and sides, those wounds yet visible above, beauty glorified, all hail Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died. 
died for me, thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. Welcome to God's house. Please turn around and wave to the person around you and say, welcome to God's house. It's good to see you. I want to give you an FYI, following the service, we have delicious cookies and uh, drink in the um, parlor, and so thank you, Kitty, uh, for doing that, and so I uh, hope to continue to do that, so let's have some time of, of gathering and talking to one, one another uh, following the service in the parlor just outside the door. As we come to our time of prayer, um, some of you have heard about the missionaries in Haiti uh, who were kidnapped. And um, the sad part about that is that um, although they may get a ransom um, for those missionaries and we pray that they're, they're uh, um, safe, uh, that will probably stop other missionaries from coming to Haiti uh, because of that. And, um, and that eventually ends up hurting the, the entire country um, who is very poor. So let's keep that in, in, in our prayers. And also, please keep in your prayer, um, Debbie Boffman, she attends the second service, is having knee surgery on Wednesday, so please keep her in your prayers um, this week. Are there other prayer requests that we want to um, pray for? Hmm? Oh, so um, Ashley Brown and, and um, Matt Brown um, just uh, buried his grandfather. And then yesterday, I received a text that another family member has passed away. So please keep that family in your, in your prayers. Nancy and I were able to go over t uh, to be with them um, for the funeral of his grandfather. So it's just uh, sad to hear that. So please keep them in your prayers. Our prayer hymn is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Let's uh, sing that as we go through our time of prayer. That's on page 349. 349. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. Praise leads him in the light. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are having surgeries up and coming. We think of Debbie Boffman and Chris Ledesky. We pray for the Brown family who has had another loss of a family member, that you would give them comfort and grace in their time of need. We pray for the missionaries who have been kidnapped, and we pray for their safe return. We pray for the country of Haiti. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that your presence is here with us today, and you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, the fairest of 10,000, and you're our Jehovah Jireh. You provide for us the air we breathe, the sunshine, the rain. You care for us. And Lord, we confess that at times we miss our calling. We miss the opportunity to follow your will, and sometimes we just flat out sin. And Lord, when we do that, we pray that we would seek forgiveness and know that each and every time that you would forgive us. And so, Lord, we are thankful for the big things and the blessings and the little things for children, for grandchildren, for parents, for a career a job, for all the blessings of this life, we do thank you for your care for us and love for us. Today we will be talking about heaven, Lord, a place that you are preparing for those who love you, and 
it's such a wonderful place. And so, Lord, be with us as we study the scriptures and we look and see that it's not something to fear, but something to look forward to when our life's journey is over. And so, Lord, bless us this day as we gather in your name and we continue our time of prayer as we pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our time of worship with the giving and receiving of the Lord's tithes and our offering, our offertory sentences. Let's honor God with our tithing. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Well, the offertory song um, today, I would like to uh, sing a song that all of you know. It's a song titled, It Is Well With My Soul. And I don't know where you're at in life today, if everything is well with your soul. The story behind this particular song is written by Horatio Spafford, who in 18... 83, he lost his wife and children, and he lost them on a ship going over the Atlantic Ocean. And then he took a ship a couple months later to go to England to be with family, and the captain stopped where that place was and called Horatio Spafford up to the deck and told him this is about the spot where the ship had sunk. And he was from Chicago, and he began to write this song, It Is Well With My Soul, even though he had lost his family. And he had the same thought of Job, not cursing God, but saying, I know they're in heaven, and it is well with my soul. And perhaps your own life, you've had loss or hurt, and you've come to the conclusion that it is well with your soul, and put your faith and trust in God. So as I sing this song, um, you can sing along with me if you know it. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast Cloud be rolled back as 
Stand together for the doxology. Heavenly Father, we want to follow you fully. Help us to surrender all we are and all we have without holding anything back. Amen. You may be seated.
C.S. Lewis said, for the present is a point at which time touches eternity. But what is time? Is it the winding hands of the clock? The rhythmic movements of the cogs pulling us into the seconds, minutes, and hours that echo from one day to the next? Is it the moments found within the mundane, the quiet voice whispering for us to move on, to grow old? We were created with intention and purpose, not to be instruments of time, but of eternity, transformed by the sacrifice of our Savior, who gave his life on the cross. It is through him we have been set free, released from the shackles of time. We live day in and day out in relationship with the risen Christ. It is through his blood that was shed through his resurrection, through the glorious redemption of his body on earth, that we have been invited into the mystery of his creation, the restoration of all things. Because of this, we live beyond time, beyond the reality before our eyes, beyond our fears, failures, and expectations. Christ broke the barriers of time that we may be partakers in the mysteries of eternity. No longer beholden to death, for we have been born again to a living hope. Redeemed by the eternal God who was and is and is to come. I wanted to share that video with you because it talks about the complexities of God, the awesomeness of God, the wonder of God, and there's so much to know and so little that we know. Really, all we have is this one book. It's the Bible, but it tells us a good deal about God, but not everything. Is there anyone here that understands and knows all the mysteries and and things in the universe. Has anyone got to that point yet? No, no, no hands. I, I haven't either. I, I sure haven't figured, figured it all out. Is there anyone here who understands all the technology that is out there in the world? I, I can hardly turn my cell phone on, you know, sometimes. I don't know. I have to call my kids and say, hey, how do you get this app on there? There are a lot of things I do not know about the complex world, and, and I'm quick to admit it. I have more questions than I have answers. And For example, I, I do not comprehend the difference between good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. You know, they say that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but the doctor says that I shouldn't eat apple pie. It's got bad cholesterol. I said, what? That's a, apples are good, aren't they? Or why is there bad cholesterol in bacon? Bacon is the best tasting thing in the world. I don't understand that all the time. I, I don't understand why my uh, brand new automobile uh, works and works uh, and then breaks down two months before the warranty. Has anyone figured out why that happens um, oftentimes? And there are just things that I don't understand also about theolo theology. What? Pastor Bob, you don't understand everything about theology? You know, I went to to school four years to get my degree in the Bible. I, I went three more years to get my Master's of Divinity in seminary, and then I had three more years of training and guidance to become an elder. You'd think a guy with that much education should know it all, right? Well, there are a lot of pastors who are know-it-alls, I'll tell you that, but they don't know it all. And I find good comfort in there because Billy Graham said that he didn't understand everything. And so if it's good enough for Billy, it's good enough for Bob. Amen? And so, but I want you to know that the Bible helps us find the answers to many of life's questions. Let me ask you another question. Anyone here know what heaven's going to be like? I mean, exactly what heaven's going to be like? We don't. We get pictures and glimpses of it and described in the Bible, but we don't really know exactly what it's supposed to be. In fact, Paul said that he looked through a mirror dimly. Have you ever looked through a, a windshield that was all fogged up? 
That's, that's not a good picture, especially when you're driving down the road 60 miles an hour. That's not good. But when you have a window, be it the, the kitchen window or the bathroom window, it's fogged up. You can, you can see outside just images, but there's no clarity to it. And you really need to kind of wipe that down, and then you can see. And so Paul was saying here that when it comes to the afterlife, when it comes to heaven, I look through a mirror dimly. But then he says, but one day, I'll know everything. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, he said, For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall be fully known, even as I am fully known. And what Paul is saying is that I don't know everything from this side of heaven and earth, but one day when I get to heaven... I'll be able to ask all those questions. You ever thought about when you're in heaven what the first question you're going to ask God might be? You know, that's an interesting question. I've come to the conclusion that death is a door to another place. You shouldn't really be afraid of death, but sometimes we are. Paul said... In 2 Corinthians 5, 1, he said, If this earthly tent we dwell in is destroyed, we move into another house, eternal in the heavens. Don't you find it interesting that Paul talks about this earth experience? Because we're all here 100 years or less, right? That your time on earth is kind of like a tent, okay? How, how many here just love living in a tent for a week? Anyone here in that club? None of us. We, we like our home with our air conditioners and our cable TV and our ice cream when we want it, right? Well, I tell you something. Richard, you halfway raise your hand back there because I know you're one of those guys that do uh, like to do that. But I love to go out. And Tom, I know you camped with me. But when you go in, in camping, the tent the first night is just awesome. Because you, you go out camping and you're in the woods and you're canoeing and you're hiking and it's just wonderful and you're setting up camp and you set your tent up with your sleeping bag and you build a fire and you have hot dogs or s'mores and you know that you begin to see the beautiful stars come out and you get into your tent and the first night is just wonderful. And then the second night comes and then the mosquitoes come out and they get inside of your tent and you're trying to sleep while you hear this you're waving them off, and it's a little bit annoying. And then the third night, you're sleeping in a tent on the ground in your sleeping bag, and there's a pine cone underneath your tent or the rock, and you can't really sleep comfortable. And then the fourth night, you know, it's really hot and sweaty. And so by the fifth night, you're saying, let's go home to the nice, wonderful home with family, with comfortableness. You see, folks, this tent that Paul is talking about, is the world you're living in right now. And when you were in your 20s and certainly your 30s, that was like the first night of camping. Life was good. It was awesome. You had tons of energy, and it was fun being in the tent. And then the older you get, the more bumps and bruises and aches and pains you get. You say, well, maybe this, maybe this tent isn't so good. And so Paul is saying there's a transition point, my friends, where you go to an eternal home, where you no longer are in the uncomfortable tent. But you're in heaven. Paul understood that death is a door for people to pass through in order to reach a new home. And as frightening as the world where death sounds, those who have had near-death experiences tell us it's not something to be afraid of. Have you ever heard those stories of individuals who are in accidents and they actually died on the operating table? And through doctors and nurses and medical science, they were able to be brought back and they tell this wonderful story of seeing this bright light or, or going into heaven and being transported to this wonderful place of peace and love and compassion. And they tell us it's not something that we should be afraid of, but something we should welcome if and when the time comes. I want you to know that eternal life in heaven is a promise. God promises you heaven. How many of you here believe you're going to go to heaven? Raise your hand, every one of you I know. You're going to get there. I cannot tell you how many times I've been 
at the bedside behind a Christian who's been a Christian for years and years, and there's a little bit of doubt. Well, Pastor Bob, do you, do you think I'm really going to get there? And you know, the last thing I want to do is say, I don't know, let's flip a coin and see you if you think you might get there. You know what I say to them? I say, you know you're going to be there. You'll be there with your family. Jesus will be there. It is going to be the nicest, most awesome place in the whole universe. Yes, you're going to get there. Do not let the devil crush that promise. First John, the book of First John in the New Testament, is a book to help us understand and to secure our place in the heaven. It says, I've written these things that you may know that you have a heavenly home waiting for you. Jesus says this, John 12, 32, And if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Folks, what that tells us is that when we breathe our last and our heart stops breathing, Jesus guides us to be with the heavenly Father. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus is the conductor of the train that gets us to heaven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We may not understand exactly what heaven is like, but we know it will be wonderful because God is there. You will be able to see God in his fullness as Moses saw God's side. God is there. John 14, 1 through 4 says, Jesus tells us this, I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Isn't that wonderful? We know that your family members who are Christians will be there, but God will be there. You know, there's an old country doctor that went to visit someone who was terminally ill. And he, he got to the man's house, and his name was Ed. And the doctor was working and talking to Ed, and Ed said, Doc, what's heaven going to be like? I know you're a Christian man. What's heaven going to be like? And the doctor thought a little bit, and he, he told Ed, he said, Ed, I really don't know. But do you hear that scratching on the door of your house? That's my dog. I brought my dog in the car just to go for a ride. And he wants to come inside your home. He's never seen the inside of your home, but you know, my dog knows that his master is in this house. And he wants to be with his master. He said, Ed, I don't know what heaven's going to be like, but I do know one thing, that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be there. And that's a good thing. And I want to be there with my Lord. So Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. The third point I want to share is heaven is a home. It's a home for you folks. It's a home where other family members be there. It's a home where God will be there, your heavenly Father. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 1 said, We have a building from God, an eternal heaven, not built by human hands. Jesus said in John 14, In my Father's house are many rooms. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I do not know if your, your home is going to be five bedrooms, ten bedrooms, 15 baths, you know, with a swimming pool in the back and courtyard basket. I don't know what it's going to be like. I know it's going to be wonderful. You know why I know it's going to be wonderful? Because of the passage in 1 Corinthians 2.9. Listen to me carefully. Here's what Paul tells us about heaven. He said, no eye has seen. No ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, folks, it's going to be the greatest thing you can ever imagine. Far more than you can imagine, according to this verse. How many of you have been to Disney World? Isn't that a wonderful place? How many of you have been on a cruise? Isn't that a wonderful place? It's far better than any of those things and more. I think the two words that describe heaven the best are this. Endless creativity. Endless creativity. According to that verse, your wildest imagination cannot begin to touch what God has prepared for you in the heaven. For many of you, because heaven is a home, 
it will mean warmth. It will mean family. It will mean comfort. I want to share a story with you because some of us still are fearful about what's on the other side because we love this wonderful earth so much. No matter what your age, I want to take you back nine months before you were born. Actually, about three months before you were born. You're inside your mother's womb. And inside your mother's womb, it's warm. It's comfortable. You're hearing your mother's voice. You're fed every day. And you do not know what's on the other side. And you could say, I think I'll just stay here forever. Not knowing what's on the other side. Wouldn't that be a shame? There's a story of twins where one twin said, I think I can hardly wait to get out and say hi to my mommy and daddy. I can hardly wait to get out and start living life and doing all the wonderful things that whatever's on the other side. And the other one said, no, let's stay in here. Let's not go out so quickly. Isn't that the story of us on earth? Some of us say, oh, oh, I want to stay here for a couple hundred years. Some of us can't wait to get to heaven. What if that baby just stayed in the womb? They'd never know the glory and goodness of life. What if we decided we just didn't want to go into heaven? We'd never know the goodness and glory and wonder of heaven. You know, there's some wonderful Christmas songs about being home. I'll be home for Christmas. There's no place like home for the holidays. We sing those songs, I'll fly away, and if heaven's not my home, Billy Graham once said, my home is in heaven. This earth, I'm just a passing through. Folks, you're here for 99 years or less. Make it wonderful. Make it good. Make each chapter, each year amazing. But when God calls you home, know that there's a beautiful, wonderful, amazing place. Some of you already have family there. Your spouse is there. And you'll be with them again. Heaven is going to be a wonderful place because God is there. And he wants you there forever. Amen? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we all long for heaven. But while we're here on earth, may we bring a bit of heaven in our own home, in our tent, and bring your presence with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Only Trust Him. It's on page 337. Let's stand together and sing this hymn, Only Trust Him.
like to thank you again for coming. Um, please um, know that there's refreshments in the parlor. Please take the opportunity to do that. Let us bow our heads and hearts for our choral benediction. and keep us his face to shine upon us and be gracious upon us may God instill within our hearts that a heaven awaits us in glory with God for eternity may God bless us all until we meet again and all God's people said amen, amen. God bless you all thank you so much for coming God bless